And uh, you're going to see it. I hope it touches your heart. So everybody just pay attention, amen, and, and be blessed. Amen. Go ahead, Nico. Do you have it in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God can save us, and he's wanted to save us. And the message that you're about to hear from my father is a message he believes that can not only change the direction of our nation, but it can change the direction of your life for eternity. Young Billy Graham hailed another Billy Sunday. Reverend Billy Graham, one of the most inspirational and spiritual leaders of the 20th century. Thank you for coming, Billy Graham. Would you up here to the evangelist, author, educator, Dr. Billy Graham. It's marvelous to be the man who honors us by being here today. What is your purpose? Go into a whole world and proclaim this message. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Shall make you free. As I look back over my life, it's full of surprises. I never thought I would become friends with people in different countries all over the world. I see how God's hand guided me. When I began preaching many years ago, it was not with any thoughts that I'd been preaching to large audiences. Countries in great need of a spiritual awakening. Look at the times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and I've seen how far people have wandered from God. Of all the things that I've seen and heard, there's only one message that can change people's lives and hearts. There is a way if you come by the way of the cross. Tell people about the meaning of the cross. Not the cross that hangs on the wall or around someone's neck. We receive our freedom purchased by the ransom of the cross. But the real cross of Christ. The cross expresses the great love of God. His scarred and blood stained. His was a rugged cross. His real purpose for coming was to die. Many will react to this message, but it is the truth. And with all my heart, I want to leave you with the truth. God says, I love you, I love you, I love you with everlasting love. He loves you, willing to forgive you of all your sins. Among our churches, we have a cross. It's embossed on our Bibles, on our Bibles. The cross was a relic. It was a medallion on a necklace at best. It's an ornament that we wear around our necks, Christians and non-Christians. The cross really didn't have any meaning to me except for something artistic that rock stars wore. But talk about the depth and the real meaning of the cross, and it becomes an offense. Why is that? The cross is offensive because it confronts people. Even so. It's a confrontation that all of us must face. I was really hurting and just didn't understand the source of all my pain and, and, and problems. I spent my whole life just burdened for something. Hungering for something, thirsting after, chasing this thing that I couldn't put my finger on ultimately. I was abused by older people, some in the family, some outside of the family. So as I got older, I always talked back, I always got into fights. My whole world was surrounded by guns and drugs and gangs. I remember in 
front of all my friends, just tell them to watch this. And as a lady uh, was driving down the street, I jumped in the middle of the street and pointed the gun right at her. Just to see her panic and freak out. And it was just me seeking power. My mom always told me about God. I think I had an idea that God was big and good, but as time went on and I saw more and more tragic things happen around me, I think that was the beginning of me just questioning everything about life and about God. When I was 10 years old, my stepdad came to pick me up and he said that my cousin Kelly was dead. I remember being so mad and really just, just deciding that if God was big and good, why wouldn't he protect my cousin who was so tiny and so awesome, such a funny, brilliant little guy. Why wouldn't God protect him from a huge muscle guy like his stepdad who beat him to death? I look out across the audience when I stand up to preach, and I think of all the people with their different backgrounds and their various needs. And I know that they are objects of God's mighty love. To the point that he gave his son, his only son, to die upon a cross. And the cross was the most terrible form of execution by the Romans for criminals. And Jesus endured all that in our place because of our sins. We deserve the cross. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment and all that that means. I know that there are many people that dispute that. People don't want to hear that they're sinners. To many people, it's an offense. The cross is offensive because it directly confronts the evils which dominate so much of this world. You see, the Bible teaches that all of us are wrong. We've all gone astray. We've everyone turned to his own way. And when we turn to our own way, we go astray from God's way. And that includes the whole human race. And that's why the world is in such terrible danger right now. It's not dangerous so much because we have atomic bombs. It's dangerous because of the human hearts back of the bombs. Filled with envy and hate and strife and greed and lust and all the other things that can pull the trigger. thinking that same year that my cousin died about the depth of the evil in the world. I never wanted to have kids. It was just a new person to suffer. That was the year I started to cry myself to sleep every night and stopped believing in God. I couldn't get away from my own depression. So I started studying other religions. There was a lot of nice ideas, but there wasn't any tangible healing. And I remember thinking, I'm tired of the pain in my heart. I'm tired of going to bed that way. I'm tired of feeling like a burden. I'm just tired of not knowing why I'm alive. And so I remember the night I laid in bed and I knew I was going to commit suicide the next day. I knew that I was not going to live past tomorrow. By 16, I was getting high on a daily basis and got involved with a woman after woman after woman. And, you know, when you mix drugs, you mix alcohol, you mix youth, it's cause for an explosion. <laughs> My mother was really concerned about me. I remember 
she just grabbed a Bible and said, I don't know what to do, but you just need to read this Bible. You know, I remember taking the pages of the Bible and just ripping them out and throwing them on the ground and saying, I don't care about your God, I don't care about this. This isn't mean anything to me. One reason that the cross is an offense to people is because it demands, doesn't suggest, it demands a new lifestyle in all of us. Sin is a disease in the human heart. It affects the mind and the will and the emotions. Every part of our being is affected by this disease. How can we break this bondage? How can we be set free? God helps us break those chains. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. He can make you a totally new person. On the day that I planned to commit suicide, I came home from school and my grandma was there and she wasn't supposed to be there. And she looked at me and said, there's something wrong with you. You're gonna go to church. I was like, no way I'm going to church. And she screamed at the top of her lungs like we were fighting back and forth and I just didn't want to listen to her yell anymore. And so I decided, fine, I'll go. And then afterwards, I'll go ahead and follow through with my plan. So I went to the back of the church and slumped down in my chair and hated everybody in the room. And the pastor started speaking and I hated him more than anyone. And he says, there's a suicidal spirit in the room. And of course, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I was, well, this is really weird. <laughs> and I got up and went to the door a white-headed man is standing there and he stopped me and it was like, the Lord wants me to speak to you. He wants you to know that even though you've never known an earthly father, that God will be a better father to you than any earthly father could ever be. God knows the pain in your heart. He's seen you cry yourself to sleep at night. The idea was so overwhelming to me He's like, do you want me to pray for you so that Jesus can take the pain out of your heart? He put his hand on my shoulder and started to pray. It was as if the God of the universe showed up right in front of me. And the first thing I noticed was that God was holy and good. And the second thing I noticed was that I was so not holy and not good. I was in a really dark place. I was really lonely, really depressed. And a friend of mine reached out and invited me to a conference. And I'm thinking, why not? My mind was blown when I got there. I had never seen anything like it. I saw guys with, with bullet wounds and ex-gang members who loved Jesus. And I had never seen anything like that before. And so, uh, I was intrigued. I'll never forget the pastor. You know, he started talking about Jesus and, and talking about him in an intense way that I had never thought about before. I had never just imagined Jesus as a real person going through real things. I just kind of thought of him as this fairy, off distant person. But he brought it home to me and he started talking about Jesus um, being beaten and being whipped um, for a crime he didn't commit and skin being ripped off his back and him having to, in the midst of this pain, carry this cross up this mountain of a skull and being pinned to this cross. 
it was so vivid and visual to me. I could, I, it was like I could see this happening to Jesus. And I remember him saying like, how dare you tough guys call my Jesus a punk? You know, like, look at what he went through. And then the preacher said, do you not know you've been bought with a price? And it just came to a head. It was like, wow. On that cross, God was laying on Jesus our sins. They not only put nails in his hands, but before that, they scourged him. A Roman scourge was a terrible thing. They took whips and pellets on those whips and beat a person almost to death. And then they took that cross and made him carry the cross, which was in his weakened condition was almost impossible. carried that cross to a place outside of Jerusalem. And then they put nails in his hands. But that was not the real suffering. The real suffering is when he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible moment, he and God, the Father, were separated. shed his blood, and the shedding of that blood carries with it God's very life. The blood is the meeting place between God and man, and the Bible says without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness, and that's what Christ was doing on the cross. He was making atonement for our sins, and he was shedding his blood. Now when you take the blood out, that means you're giving your life. And that's what it means. It means the life of Christ. The cross and the resurrection of Christ offers forgiveness of sin, offers a whole new life, and offers you eternal life if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Jesus literally took all of this on his own back for me. You know, I remember bowing out, just head touching the ground and saying, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. But one step led to another, which led to another. And, you know, I was back drinking and sleeping around with women. And the conviction that I was now feeling was so strong. And I remember driving on the highway, just thinking to myself, God, you got to do something. Because if you don't do something, I, I, I might hurt myself or hurt somebody else. I don't know what's gonna happen, but just don't kill me. I get cut off by a truck and my truck just starts tipping until it flips over and starts rolling fast. The glass is coming in, the windshield cracks. I'm not wearing a seatbelt at all, so I'm kind of floating around the car. And I looked myself over. There was just a piece of glass stuck in my arm. And I pulled it out, and that was it. I said, Lord, I need to get with you. I need you to change me. I need you to really make this real, and I need to stop running from you. I was genuinely trying to know him more and read my Bible and grow. And I really began to be a passionate Christ follower. But you set me free. that none of us is righteous, not even one, and that our works are like filthy rags to God. Jesus lived the life I could not live and died the death I should have died. You know, that, that gets me every time just to think, man, everything 
not put my trust in him. If God had looked at me and said, go away forever, he would have been right. It would have been just as the same time I felt that, I felt him inviting me to an embrace of grace and love, unconditional. It was like God was saying, I love you. I know you're tired of the way you've been living and I will make you new if you will let me. My heart was just, yes, it just said, yes, I, I need that, I want that, please. And that's why I woke up the next day. I just felt such a peace and a joy almost that I'd never felt before. Jesus saved my life and on top of everything else, the life of my son and the new baby. That wouldn't be if Jesus hadn't intervened and rescued me. The most overwhelming thing is to think that Jesus became sin and it was my sin and it was things that I've done the house and on the cross, it was things that I've done. He hung naked on a cross, bleeding in a shameful way, so that I would never have to be shamed for the things that I've done. The truth is, the truth is, there is no other way besides Christ and what he did. There is no life outside of that. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin, but all of that, he was a righteous one, and when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin, he no longer sees your own heart, he sees Jesus. Now I don't understand all about it, there are many things about the cross and about salvation that I do not understand, and I'm not told that I have to understand. I'm told that I'm to believe, and anybody can believe, a blind man can believe, a deaf man can believe, an old person can believe, a young person can believe, and that word believe means commit. I commit my life totally to Him. Jesus Christ from the cross says, I will save you, I will forgive you, I will change you, I'll make you a new person if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change. To change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. You will know that you're the only one that can change me. Home went dark that violent day. The whole earthquake had lost display. Three days silent in the ground. This body born for heaven's crown.
rebellion and rejection, God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins. And when Christ died on that cross, he became guilty of lying. He became guilty of slander. He became guilty of jealousy. He became guilty of the most filthy, dirty sins. Christ took the hell that you and I deserve. Now God said, receive it. Believe it. Put your trust and your confidence in him, and I will forgive your sins, and I will guarantee you eternity in heaven. It's all yours, and it's all free. All you have to do is receive Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer, sentence by sentence, after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive. I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. If you just prayed that prayer, we would like to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can go to our website, and there we have the material right there, and you can look at it. But I want you to remember this. Remember that God loves you. And the Bible tells us that. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You see, that's our hope everlasting life with Almighty God in heaven. Thank you for watching. God bless you. stories. Uh, yeah. Lecrae's been here in Pueblo. He's performed here a couple times. And maybe we can get him back one of these days to come and sing over here. Amen. But, uh, but uh, you know, I, I was thinking um, about salvation because a lot of times, you know, I mean, and I know a lot of times we uh, talk about people being heroin addicts or on drugs or or, or this, you know, all these, you know, hardcore testimonies and stuff you hear. But a lot of you never done any drugs. A lot of you come from backgrounds that, you know, and really the only thing drugs does is covers up the real feelings of a person anyway. You know what I mean? And, and uh, so we have some kids, we have youth. We have others who, maybe you've never done anything like that. Maybe you've never done what they said, you know, or, or what they've done, or been in gangs or anything like that, but still your heart is broken for whatever reason. Yeah. Maybe you're here and you're an adult, you know what I mean, and you have done that. And still, no matter how, how high you've ever been, you wake up and your heart's still broken. Yeah. Your relationship's still shattered, abusive, and all this stuff, you know what I mean? Or, or maybe you're just a... A young teenager or a kid, and you, you don't understand why things have ended up the way they do. And only you know. This this girl here, you know what I mean? You heard her. She was just a young girl, and her little cousin got beat to death. She got mad at God, because we don't understand why things happen in our lives. Yeah. Or why Dad left, and why, 
I'm a single parent or why I'm in a foster home or why, you know, these, these things have happened and, and a lot of times, you know, we don't, we don't understand things like that, you know, but God does. God is, you know, that's the thing about Jesus. He can reach the worst, worst person in the world has done the most crime and ugly stuff you could think of to the most innocent person that you probably would say, you know, just a saint, you know, never done anything in your life, but still we were born into that nature of sin, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the difference. And some of you that are that are maybe watching my YouTube or, or, or some of you that are here and you think, well, there's, you know, well, Muslims or Jehovah's Witness or Buddha, or, you know, Buddhists or, 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 or you know, all this is, is uh, it's just as good. They're all the same. They all serve the same God and this and that. I'm telling you today, it's not true. It's not true. You know, I mean, Jesus is the only one that was risen from the dead. Muhammad's in his grave. Buddha's in his grave. Confucius is in his grave. Hare Krishna's in his grave. All these religious good men are in their graves today. They're dead. And they will face God one day. You with me? But Jesus is the only one that was risen from the dead. That's why there's no other name. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not a, by, a, by which any man can really get saved and give their lives you know, I mean, to the Lord. There's only one way. And that's why, you know, even with us, many of us come from a Catholic background. You know what I mean? And, and the way I see it is that they, they feel like the church... And, and you, maybe when you were small, you got baptized. That's what saves you. And I'm telling you today, that's not true. Each and every one of us have sinned and done wrong. And each and every one of us, it, it, it's not the church that saves you. It's God that saves you through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what the cross is all about. Each and every one are going to come to that crossroads. And you're going to have to make a decision which way I'm going to go. It doesn't matter today if you're 8 years old or if you're 80 years old. You have to decide today, which way am I going to go? It's not what church you go to, you know what I mean, this and that. It's have I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. That's the only thing that's going to matter on the day that you are put in that pine box or that you face the Lord is what did you do with the salvation that I sent my son Jesus? Oh, well, I didn't believe in that religion, Lord. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. You with me? And, and, and did you accept that my son was your... And what did he say? To believe means? What did he say on the thing? To accept, to believe. He said to commit. Believe means to commit your life to Jesus Christ. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what the outcome is. But I can guarantee you that it's going to be a lot better than where you're at today. Your heart will be... You know, when I got saved... I had all this baggage and all this stuff, but I said, if, I, if God can change my heart, because I was hurting. That's why I did what I did. Lecrae was hurting. That's why he did what he did, tore the Bible up and everything like that. You know what I mean? That girl, never done wrong, but still she was hurting and wanted to kill herself. How much worse can you get at hurting than that? Yeah. That you don't want to live anymore. You don't like your life anymore. Jesus can give you a brand new life. Yeah. Jesus can save you from all that stuff. And you don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. All you got to do is have faith and say, you know what? I guess I'm just standing and waiting on God. And God's going to open the future for me. God's going to lead me and guide me in the way that I should go. You with me? Amen. And you know what I mean? So there's no arguing about it. There's no, you know what I mean? You know, the, really all it comes down to is, do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior or not? And if you don't, you're, you're, you know what I mean? John 3.16 goes on to 3.17. He didn't come into the world to condemn it, but that through him all men should be saved. 18 said, this is the condemnation. This is why people will be eternally cast away from God. Because God sent his son into the world to die, die on that cross. And you said you didn't need it. You said, I'll do it my way. That's the condemnation there. Those that accept him. Those that receive him, he says, you're going to have everlasting life. You with me? Man. And that's the, that's the gospel. That we don't have to. We hear about how, whether you believe in it or not, it doesn't matter. It's there. It, it's there. <laughs> you with me? And the thing is, is you don't have to ever go there. And that's why he sent his son. 
so that you never have to go there. Right. He said he'll give you life and life more abundantly. In other words, that means an awesome life. Amen. He said, uh, today I read my little scripture from the phone and it said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil Amen. to give you hope and an expected end or a, or a or like, a, I don't know how it said it, like the end, of, but a prosperous uh, future. That's what God wants to do for you today. So no matter if you're here today and you're addicted to drugs, or if you've never done any, you feel like you never even sinned in your life, you know what I mean? The thing, you know what I mean? But we all need Jesus today. We all need Jesus. And your opportunity today to accept him is here, because you're not promised tomorrow. Because God forbid you go out into the world and something happened. You could be taken just like that. And when you're taken just like that without accepting Christ, you're going to face that eternity without God. And God gives you an opportunity right now. You with me? Amen. To accept His Son, Jesus Christ. To, to, to turn away from all those, the way we've been feeling and hurting. And to come to Him and receive real life. You with me? And, and uh, so I'm going to ask you, you know what I mean, if, if you're here today and you say, you know what, and, and you've never received the Lord, you've never accepted him, you've never asked Jesus in your heart, but today you say, you know what, I want to accept Jesus. I want to, or, or rather, I prayed this prayer with him. I want, I want to, you know, I want to live my life for him. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to come to the front this morning. If you'll say this morning, I accept Jesus Christ in my heart. And I want to serve him the rest of my life. I want you to come to the front this morning. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Any of you kids? Any kids want to get saved this morning? Give your life to Jesus? Any teenagers? It's going to wait a little bit longer. Because you know what? I really believe that, that, that this was really towards especially our kids and our teenagers. And teenager, I don't know what you're going through, and you don't know what you're going through. But God sent this video here specifically for you because you've been asking questions, you've been wondering, you've been hurting, and God sent this video for you. You with me? And I, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to, you know, I mean, I, I never want to force anybody to accept the Lord, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is you got to understand, if you're not living for the Lord this morning and you don't come to the front to accept Him, what you're saying is, I reject you, Jesus. I don't want you. And I'm going to try my chances on my own. You with me? And I don't want that for you. Give him a chance, not this church, not this man, not, not your parents, not your... Give Jesus the, the opportunity to come in your heart and let him prove himself to you. Anybody else? your people, Lord, not by force, not by a, an army making somebody do something, but by the Holy Spirit, oh God. Father, especially I pray for our youth. I pray for these young kids, Lord. 
Lord, and we can tell him a thousand times, but show yourself to him, Lord. Make yourself real. Confirm your word, Father, with signs and wonders following. Do a miracle for him, Lord. Something you've been asking them. Prove yourselves, Lord God. Prove yourself, Father, to these young ones. Help them understand why, Lord God, that you've been there for them even though life hasn't turned out the way they would have wanted, God. But that you can help them and you can give them a better life. You can help them, Lord God, to live a prosperous future. Father, touch them, Lord. Touch them, Father. Touch our young people, Lord. Touch our youth. Touch Alexis, Father. Touch her, Lord. Ask him, Lexi. Come in, my Lord Jesus. Ask him, Silas. Ask him, Jesus, come in my heart, Lord. I want to serve you. Ask him, Oski. He wants to be your Lord, too. Ask him, come in my heart, Jesus. Come in my heart and help me, Lord. Ask him, Nico. Ask him, come in my heart, Lord God. He knows your struggles, Nico. He knows your hurts and your pains. Even if nobody else understands, Jesus does. And he loves you so much. He brought you into this church, into this family. I know you don't understand everything, but you're loved. You're loved so much, not only by God, but by the people here. you got a special place in our hearts. Don't ever let them let, ever feel like nobody loves you or nobody understands you. He wants to be real to you. Father, touch him. Be real in his heart, Lord God. Help him understand. Father, touch him the other day, Lord. Help him, Lord God. Father, with his life, with his past, help him in his mind, God. Father, you brought him here, Lord God. Jesus, save him today. Save him from all them sins. Save him from all his hurts. From all his pain, Lord God. Take away, Lord, the fear. Take away that anger. Take away the hurts, oh God. Let him be free, Lord. Let him feel that the freedom of Christ reign in his heart today, in his mind. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the cross, Lord. I thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for this dinner. I ask you to help her, Lord. Help her, Jesus. Help her understand in her heart. Help her, Lord. Take them walls down. Father, she's built up, Lord God, to keep people out. Heal her, Lord. Like you did that girl, Lord. Heal her in her heart. She's, she come up here, Lord God, for help. We all need you, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Show her you're real. Prove yourself, Lord. Prove yourself, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, to Alejandro, prove yourself, Lord God. Show her, Lord God. You're not alone. God is with you. And there is a God, and he loves you so. He loves you so much, he sent his son on that cross for you. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, God loves you and he believes in you. God is going to prove himself to you. Things you've been asking him for, you're going to get them. You're going to see the hand of God over your life. Father, heal her heart, Lord. Father, heal her in Jesus' name, Father. Prove your realness, God. Prove it, Father. Save her family. Save her son. Get a hold of him, Lord God. Get a hold of him today. Christopher. Christian, get a hold of him, Father. In the name of Jesus, his wife, get a hold of him, God. Touch her son. Touch her daughters. Let her household be saved. 
show Monica miracles, Lord, right in front of her face. Show her miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. Father, I thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, believe it. Believe it in Jesus' name. New creation. I take dominion and authority over the power of the enemy today in Jesus' name. You said you give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I command every foul spirit, I command depression, loose your hold over this woman of God. I speak to your mind, your will, and your emotions, and I lose the healing of God. I set you free today in the name of Jesus. Your past is wiped away. All things have become new. I, re I rebuke and bind even the memories. Father, I pray for freedom right now. For a sound mind, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heal that broken heart once and for all. This ain't something you have to do day after day. This is something you can do right now at this altar, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for a miracle right now. Your past be gone in Jesus' name. Your future bright in front of you. Son is set free, is free indeed. Looser, set her free this day. Let her walk with the joy of the Lord as her strength, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. sister now, Lord. Touch her, Father, in Jesus' name. Give her strength. Give her strength. He said, cast your cares on me, or I care for you. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. Oh, God, help her today. Give all your cares to God. He cares for you today. Lift that load. Let that burden go today. God's in control. God's in control this day. Father, bless my dad. Bless my dad today, Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord, save his soul today. Forgive for his sins, Lord. Help him, Lord, to serve you, Lord. Let him be a light. Let him be, Father, that voice of truth, Lord. Oh, Father, let's just touch him, Lord, even his physical body. Father, Lord God, let him live many more years, oh God. Oh, Father, Lord God, let him be a, that light, Lord God, that shines even in darkness, Lord. Oh, God, touch him this day. Help him, Lord. Serve you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord.
Lord, become stronger and stronger each day. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, and I pray you baptize him. And you fill him with the Holy Ghost today. Fill him with the power of God from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Fill, Lord God, him on the inside with the Spirit of the living God, with the power of God, Father. Oh, Father, I thank you today. Jesus over you. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command you, stop it. I command you, leave her alone in the name of Jesus. She belongs to the Lord this day. She's a chosen vessel and Satan, you have no authority, no power over her. The Lord rebuke you this day. I lose the blessing of God. I lose the anointing of God over you. I lose the mind of Christ. And I lose faith in your spirit. Faith to believe God. Faith to live that life. That Zoe kind of life. A victorious life. Not a life of, 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 of less than, but more than enough. Father, bless her this day. Let the hand of God be upon her. Prosper her, Lord, even financially. That she'll never be without. She'll always have more than enough. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for it now. I thank you for it, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. birthday. He said, I called you. I know you by name. I called you out of darkness to declare my praise. The devil's tried to steal your song. God put a song in you since you were a little girl. The devil, he's tried to steal that song by bringing hard times, by bringing things against you. Father, today I lose that song in the midnight hour, oh God. Songs of victory, songs of praise, songs of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, on the crown of your head and the soul of your feet. touch her this day. I pray that you would fill her with the Holy Spirit like she's never known before. I pray that you would give her words for people's lives that would change them. Father, I just pray that you would just anoint her. Father, you've healed this body and you've, you've done such an awesome miracle in her. I pray, Father, that you would use her, Lord. Use her, Father, to bring healing to those, Father, Lord God, who are physically sick, Lord. To bring healing to those who have spiritually been abused. To bring healing to those emotionally tormented, Father. Father, let healing be in her hands. Let praise be in her heart. Father, Lord God, let your anointing be upon her this day. With a boldness, Father, Lord, with the clarity of speech, with the wisdom of God, and everything you've ever taught her, Father, let it come to the top. Let it rise, Lord God. Let her be a mighty woman of God. Father, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. I anoint these hands in the name of Jesus. The hands of the sick. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the anointing of God. He says, I 
haven't I brought you from a mighty long way? Remember the way you fell in Grand Junction? Haven't I done that for you? Haven't I proven myself to you? So stand in that. Stand in my proof to you for women, for, for young women. I believe God's going to give you such a heart of love. Such a heart of love for women, for young women. For them women with destinies. He's going to refresh you. He's going to renew that love. And every time you lay hands on one of them, you lay hands on you when you were 14 years old. Every time you save one of them, you're going to save you all over again. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. And I, release, I release a fresh anointing on her. What the devil meant for evil, Lord, turn it for her good. And I speak to this body and I command it in the name of Jesus to be healed. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. I bind every every word, every no weapon forced against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment I shall condemn. I loose the blood of Jesus over you, and I declare this day the word of God over you. That it's going to heal your body, that it's going to use you in a mighty way, and no word of witchcraft can ever come against you. But God said, I put a shield around you. I'm the glory and the lifter of your head. For such a time as this. Oh, Father, receive it right now by faith. Healing, Lord. The blood of Jesus. Jesus upon you. By his stripes you are healed. Pray for her, my sister. Pray for her. Pray for her. Somebody help me. Brother Juanito, come here, man. Brother Juanito's been going through some physical problems. God cares about you. He's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Father, I lose the anointing over Brother Juanito now. Over that body in the name of Jesus, over his stomach. Father, Lord God, no matter what he did in the past, no matter how many drugs, no matter what he did to abuse his body, when he came to you, it stopped, Lord. He said it out of his mouth, Lord. It stopped at 43, and by your stripes, he is healed. And I ask you, Father, this day, on the day he was born, Father, 51 years ago, that you come and bless him now. That you come and give him, Lord God, a brand new body. That you come, let your hand of mercy be upon him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, my God. Let healing flow through this body now, Father. In the name and by the blood of Jesus of Nazareth. Father, I thank you now. I thank you for it, Lord. You said lay hands on the sick. Father, anoint them with oil, Lord God. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and shall forgive their sins, Lord. Father, I loose it now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that he shall declare the praises of God. The devil ain't going to stop you, Mom. Yes. That devil ain't going to stop you. Yes. God, anoint him and set him on fire. Yes. That he would run for you every day of his life, God. Oh, Father, until the day you yes. say he's going to go home, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for it. Let the healing of God, even on his hands, Lord God. Father, let the anointing touch him. Begin to pray for people, Mom. 
God's going to send people in your life that are sick. And when you hear that, say, I'm going to lay my hands on you. God's going to heal you. Yes. And every time you lay your hands on them, you lose the anointing, even in your own body. Yes. And you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. Every time you lay your hands on them, God's going to continue to heal you. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it now. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. say to my mother-in-law, I just feel the spirit of the Lord saying again, I tell you, I haven't forgotten about you. God remembers you, Mary. God remembers you, and he hears your prayers. And I pray this morning that your knees, that your body would be healed. And Father, Lord, I ask you to give her faith, give her strength. But more than anything, encourage her. More than anything, let her know, today I thought about you, says the Lord. And you're always before my thoughts, says God. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. And in this life, you're going to have some troubles. But he said, hey, get excited. He said, I've overcome that world. God is with you, and God is for you, and God is going to help you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad he don't forget about you? He's an awesome God this morning. Father, we thank you for this service this morning. We thank you for the servant of God, Billy Graham, for the many years and the many souls that he's touched. And we thank you for his ministry. We thank you that he, Father, we thank you for Sister Charlene because she's the one that bought us this stuff, Lord. And Father, Lord God, we just ask you bless her. Father, we thank you, Lord God, this morning. Thank you for what you're going to do, even in Sister Vicky's life. Yes. Father, I seen her. I remember her at Lecrae concert, dancing up a storm like she was a teenage girl. I remember her, Lord. And Lord, she loves you. And would you remember that love she had? Would you remember that love and faithfulness she has towards you? And would you bless her this day? Father, we thank you so much for your presence with us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for these souls that have come to the Lord today, Lord God. You said all heaven rejoices over one sinner that gets saved, Lord. More than 99 righteous. Father, we thank you so much. We love you, we appreciate you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.